1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, 20 minutes after 11 o'clock. I just had flashbacks from when I was a kid, Robin. Okay. Do you, do you, uh, I don't know if you did this in your school. I can remember, like, one of the kids had a notebook and it had an STP sticker on it. Uh huh. STP Oil Company. Oh, all the guys, <laughs> all the boys had all those stickers on there. <laughs> and Oops. it turned out you could write to the STP company, they would send you a sticker for free. Nice. Do you remember? I, they probably don't do that anymore. And, and, uh, I can, I can remember in cereal boxes, they, they used to have, like, these little tiny packages. And you could get stickers, and you could put mm-hmm. them on things. How come yeah. We were, how come we were so creative when we were kids? We got to be creative as adults, right? I know, I know. This is wonderful. I love stickers. So why is my memory being uh, shaken up and remembering things? Because I'm on this website called pipsticks.com. Mm-hmm. E- easy name to remember, right? Pipsticks.com. Yeah. Um, there and I, they sent us some stuff too, so we're going to give it away. Um, these are stickers, and I'm not really sure I understand everything they do. Um, but it, it looks fun. You know, in, in today's world, everybody puts like emojis on their emails, etc. Yeah. You could put like stickers sti- on your real mail. Yeah, I know, but real instead of virtual, right? Uh-huh, exactly. Mo Vasquez is on the phone. She's a planner addict. Whoa. <laughs> and the head honcho of Pip Sticks. It's a yeah. subscription sticker club. I just... I just put my my email thing in there. I don't know if I'm going to get anything. Uh, the fun of collecting stickers, sticker books, and note keepers. Mo, you have stimulated the child in me. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> where, where are you right now? Where are you calling from? I'm in San Luis Obispo, California. Oh, my gosh. San Luis Obispo. I used to order things from there. What was out there? There was like a, a music company or something, wasn't there? Or do you not? Really? I don't know. There's not much. There's a beach. It's beautiful. But there's, <laughs> but there's not a whole bunch of industry out here, I have to say. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think there was a music company or something. Well, anyway, thank you for being on there with us. So tell me about what you do. What is Pip Sticks? Pip Sticks uh, is a magical subscription sticker club. So I started it a few years ago, and we send a pack of stickers uh, that we carry every month. Uh, and send to our subscribers every month. So we have thousands of subscribers that are kids. We have an adult club, um, and we uh, we create a little pack of magic that we send them in the mail, and then they use those stickers on everything from you know journals and and planners, snail mail, you know bills, everything, everything you can imagine. So, so what, what, it's pretty amazing. I, I'm just curious about the age group of your um, your yeah. subscribers. How old are they? Yeah. Well, you know, we, when I launched this, I started it for kids because I remember the, you know, the joy of sticker collecting like you were talking about as a kid. Right. Uh, but in it, 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 a few months, I realized loads of our subscribers were actually adults. So we quickly started the, kids, <laughs> the adult club. And now about 65% of our subscribers are adults. Uh, and uh, and they range in age from, you know, I would say the bulk of them are between the ages of kind of 22 and 45. But, you know, we've got well, add some si- subscribers add- that are in their 90s. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, add 63 to the list because that's me. Yeah, I, I, you stimulated something well, in me. I mean, it's fun. Well, let me see the stuff that she sent. What did yeah, you- they're wonderful. There's a sticker book. There's a planner, which is really cool for 2019. So are you, it says here you're a planner addict. So explain that. I mean, uh, do you plan everything? Did you plan this interview? <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally, I'm a, I'm a big planner. Well, you know, I may not be very organized, but I really enjoy my planner. So it, that means that, uh, you know, there's kind of a trend of paper planners coming back. So a lot of us never left, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, but a lot of people went from, you know, their file back over to their iPhone and now they're coming back to paper planners. And then, you know, the next generation is, who's always been on their phone um, is now discovering kind of the joys of something analog. So, uh, so the paper planner is, is a big deal again. And, uh, and we are adding a lot of stickers and other fun things to make it even more uh, enjoyable. You also have downloadable items also. So, which really is nice. Hmm. Yeah, it's great. So every, you know, we know that people really like to customize their planner and their agenda. So uh, once you buy one of our 17 month planners, it comes with kind of all the goodies that you need to get started. So it comes with stickers nice. and uh, stationery and a pencil pouch and, you know, um, sparkly things. And anyway, it's a lot of fun. And then 
Um, you, every subscription comes with access to a big library of downloadable printables so you can customize your planner however you want. This is fun looking stuff. Wow. Good for you. You, you know what? I was just reminding myself of. Do you remember color forms? Do you remember that, that stuff? Color forms? I love color forms. Absolutely. Yeah. Do, do you? Okay. Right? I, I, I don't know if they're still around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't really stick. Yeah, remember you know, remember they didn't them. really stick? Remember that? Well, no, you couldn't move them around. That was the whole thing. You create a new stories every time you got your board out with the color forms. You didn't have to have just yeah, one story, right. at least not in my world. Was it your world? You only made one that's story? Right. No. <laughs> so t- tell me uh, what the most popular sticker is right now or the most popular theme. What do you get the most requests for? Gosh, you know, you we can never go wrong with unicorn stickers, rainbow stickers, or uh, uh Succulent stickers. Those are really hot right now. Wait, what was the third one? Succulent? Uh, succulent. Suc- so like cactuses. And yeah. Oh, it's really? Crazy. Um, you know, but also, yep. And of course, I, you know, I left out the biggest one. Cat stickers. Everybody always loves, loves cat, cat stickers. Too. stickers. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And are you the artist? Right. I mean, do you, do you draw them? Are you the artist? <laughs> For the, for the line of planners and sticker books that we put out with Workman Publishing, yes, I, I designed everything. Um, in our subscription packs that go out once a month, uh, subscribers get a combination of stickers that I've curated from around the world. So we have awesome suppliers in uh, Japan and Korea, you know, where they have just gorgeous stationery. Um, and and it's a combination of that and stickers that, that I designed based on subscriber feedback and what they want. I think I'm looking at... Oh, I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the video that you have on your website. I'm, I'm guessing one uh-huh. of, is one of yeah, these... Yeah, that's one of them is you? reviews. Uh, dependent, the video on the, on the homepage is a combination of uh, people reviewing, uh, oh. talking about the stickers. Okay. If you I, look on... I think there's an about section that has a picture of me smiling. <laughs> I just... I, yeah, I think it, I just gave it a thumbs up. How can anybody give it a thumbs down? There's somebody... Some idiot gave it a thumbs down. Oh, that's, they're jealous. How can you vote some, something idea. positive and fun and happy? How can mm-hmm. you... Just don't... Just yeah, ignore that. It's, just, it's pretty exciting. It, it is pretty fun. It's, it's, it's amazing. We get tons of, um, you know, fan mail <laughs> from people writing in just thanking us for existing and bringing stickers back into their lives. Um, mm-hmm. So it's really, it's a fun business to so be what, in. It's a really fun business. Do you have any stories of creative ways that people use the stickers in, in addition to simply using them on their letters and their their planning books? I mean, are people put the, putting them on, oh, I don't know. Backpacks and things like that. Yeah. Do you have anything creative or clever that you yeah, well, were surprised by? You know, people, uh, I mean, people s- sticker bombing is kind of a thing. <laughs> So that's literally covering everything with stickers. So people will put, you know, a a good tip for parents. Parents, we often hear that, oh, you know, the kids end up putting stickers all over their furniture and they hate it. Um, But one tip is to give kids one place in the house to put stickers. So if you give them a door or the inside of their closet door or the underside of their, you know, their bookshelf or whatever, then instead of putting them all over the place, then they can have a collection in that one place, which is pretty cool. And it can be unseen and <laughs> by the rest mm-hmm. of the world. Um, yeah. And, you know, adults, you know, people will sticker bomb shower curtains or put them all over their mirrors. Uh, you know, people put them on their cars, obviously, and, you know, all, all over the place. And this is really helpful for children that are autistic or that have Down syndrome because they're yeah. so colorful and they can be creative yeah. in their own way. It's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, developing fine motor skills for, for all sorts of children, is it's really helpful. Do you know, Robin was kind of, she went where I wanted to go with this and just take it one step farther. Because as a musician, like if you're learning the keyboard, the the A the B the C that that doesn't always register with somebody who's autistic. But put a a, a pineapple and an apple and a banana or something, mm-hmm. and they'll get it. You yeah. know, I, I exactly. Think, yeah, that's awesome. That's a beautiful idea. Yeah, and it's very yeah, personal it's too. Fun. I mean, they're they're. Yeah, it is. And, you know, again, it's just, it's a little thing, and it seems, you know, pretty trivial, but the amount of joy that people get from stickers is kind of, it's incredible. It really is incredible. 
It is. It's wonderful. It, it is. Uh, you are incredibly uplifting. Thank you for being on the show with us today. Um, <laughs> Mo, Mo Vasquez, uh, the, the, the website is pipsticks.com. Go, go to this website. I guarantee you, first of all, you're going to say, oh, I know who would love this, and you're going to get it for somebody who would love it, mm -hmm. and then you're going to secretly get one for mm -hmm. yourself, too. <laughs> That's right. That's what we're hoping for. Yeah, I think I <laughs> you think... can be a closet sticker lover or not. There's a big community online of, of people that share the same uh, obsession. And you, you're talking to somebody, not me, but Robin, who loves to decorate packages like at gift giving time, birthdays and Christmas, etc. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it works so great on that, envelopes. That is perfect. Oh, and envelopes too. The yeah, the cards. Great too, is I feel... mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean. People tend to hoard their stickers, um, but that's the great part about being in our sticker club where you're getting them every month. It, it, it encourages people to be generous in giving them away or using them, which I love. And people make homemade greeting cards, and once they're out of the printer, you can put the stickers on there to personalize it even further, make them sparkly. Yep, that's right. Wow, thank right. you for giving us a bright spot. We, we, you know, we talk politics all morning long. You know what? You know how good this felt? This was like jumping into the pool. <laughs> yeah. This was like jumping into the swimming pool. I'm so glad to hear it. Uh, Pipsticks.com <laughs> is, is the website. Thank you, Mo. Thanks so much. All right, we'll be right back. Hi, this is Tish. I've been with the station a long time, and the best part of my job is the nice people I work with. My decades of experience gives me the background to help businesses reach their goals. Whether your business is large or small, before you make your next marketing decision, give me a call. The number is 352-732-8000, or email me at Tisha, T-I-S-H-I-A, at WOCA.com. Working together, we can come up with a marketing plan that works. Friends, countrymen, tourists, and O'Callens, lend me your ears. Hey, speaking of ears, there is an opportunity for you to help feed and provide good maintenance, housing, and medical care for Marion County's rescued big cats, bears, monkeys, and other disabled or unreleasable wild and exotic animals. Take a tour on Wednesdays or Saturdays of the Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary. Call 352-266-2859. The Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary is affectionately known as EARS. Here are today's headlines from the source. WOCA Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar is scheduled to testify before the Senate Finance Committee today. Florida U.S. Senator Bill Nelson is a senior member of that committee. He said he'll have some serious questions for the secretary regarding the 2,300 children who have reportedly been separated from their parents and are being held at various centers across the country. When he's in front of the Senate Finance Committee, he is under oath, I'd like him to explain where are these children right now? Where are they? All over the country. When are they going to be reunited with their families? Nelson also says he wants to know why when members of the Congress are given access to facilities, they are not being allowed to speak to the children. A man already sentenced for drug trafficking charges has been indicted on charges of first-degree murder by a Volusia County grand jury. Volusia County Sheriff Mike Chitwood told reporters that the indictment came in the case of a woman who died from a fatal overdose of drugs allegedly sold to her by the suspect, Steve Montilla. According to Chitwood, the suspect took advantage of someone with the disease of addiction. It's a disease, and you got scumbags like this Montilla guy who are out there praying on that disease to make a profit, knowing that the odds are what they're selling, somebody's going to die. The victim was a mother who left behind an orphaned daughter. The grand jury decision in this case is the first murder indictment of a drug dealer responsible for an overdose investigated by the Volusia County Sheriff's Office. Governor Scott was in Franklin County yesterday assessing the damages from a wildfire with the Agriculture Commissioner Adam Putnam. The fire has done quite a bit of damage to the area, and it's not over yet. We have a, a real tragedy in Franklin County. We have a fire that was... Uh fanned uh, by the approaching thunderstorms. So far, more than 950 acres of land have been burned along with at least 30 homes. The governor has pledged help from the state and Florida's chief financial officer, Jimmy Petronas, says his staff will be helping people affected to file insurance claims. 
The Marion County School Board will vote today to decide how their public school resource officers will be funded this coming year. The vote comes after state officials mandated that schools put resource officers in every middle, high, and elementary school following the string of school shootings across the country. The school district asked law enforcement agencies to not raise their rates and keep them the same as last year's numbers. The school board is considering 56 school resource officers between three different agencies at a cost of about $3.8 million. The school board will vote on that funding during their meeting this evening at 5.30 p.m. Volusia County Sheriff's deputies say a Port Orange woman was arrested after she allegedly tried to abduct two children along with hitting their pregnant mother. 34-year-old Sarah Freeman is facing charges such as attempted kidnapping and aggravated battery on a pregnant victim, according to the Volusia County Sheriff's Office news release. Deputies say the incident happened at a Volusia County beach. Freeman allegedly approached a 7-year-old girl and told the girl, quote, this isn't a Florida trip. You're going to want to remember, unquote, and then she tried to grab the little girl. Authorities say the girl's mother, who is six months pregnant, quickly pulled her daughter back, though Freeman reportedly hit the mother during the scuffle. Freeman then approached the father of the seven-year-old girl and hit him in the backside with a stick. She allegedly also told the parent's five-year-old son, he's not your dad, and grabbed the child by the arm and tried to walk away. According to the sheriff's office, the father then grabbed hold of his son and brought him back to the truck where Freeman tried to force her way in. Freeman also reportedly tried to grab another child nearby, but the witness told deputies they were able to get to their vehicle and lock their doors. Upon the arrival of deputies, Freeman was taken into custody immediately. Freeman is being held without bond at the Volusia County Jail. Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin is suing two of his children and a former business manager, accusing them of misusing his credit cards, transferring money from an account, and slandering by saying he has dementia. Aldrin's lawsuit filed earlier this month in a Florida state court came a week after his children, Andrew and Janice, filed a petition claiming their father was suffering from memory loss, delusions, paranoia, and confusion. They asked for the court to name them as his legal guardians, saying Aldrin was associating with new friends who were trying to alienate Aldrin from his family and that he has been spending his assets at an alarming rate. Court-appointed mental health experts planned to evaluate Aldrin in Florida this week. In April, the 88-year-old Aldrin underwent his own evaluation conducted by a geriatric psychiatrist at UCLA who said Aldrin scored superior to normal for his age on tests. Aldrin was a member of the Apollo 11 crew, which landed the first two human on the moon. Aldrin joined Neil Armstrong to walk on the surface of the moon in July of 1969. A feisty alligator was found in the parking lot of a public supermarket in Sarasota. The Sarasota County Sheriff's Office said in a Facebook post yesterday that they found the small alligator in the parking lot, and news outlets report the video shows the reptile was hiding under a boat trailer before deputies were able to hook it around the neck. The Sheriff's Office says this is a reminder that if you're out boating, to be sure to check underneath the trailer to make sure you're not bringing any alligators out of the water. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Committee Commission says alligators more than four feet in length are considered to be a threat to people, pets, and property, and are deemed nuisance alligators, which will be slaughtered. The voice of the Miami Sound Machine has landed a role in a Netflix series. Alan McBride has that story. Gloria Estefan has a new gig. The Miami Sound Machine vocalist says she's landed a guest starring role on the upcoming third season of the Netflix series One Day at a Time. Estefan announced on social media that she'll play Mirtha, the baby sister and arch nemesis of Lydia, actress Rita Moreno's character on the show. Estefan also sings the theme song for One Day at a Time, which is a reboot of the 1970s Norman Lee your classic sitcom. I'm Alan McBride. And Disney Springs' newest restaurant is set to debut on Thursday. Terralina Crafted Italian officially opens its doors June 28th. Levy Restaurants announced yesterday. The restaurant is a concept from James Beard award-winning chef Tony Mantuano and executive chef Justin Plank and will feature authentic cuisine inspired by Italy's Lake District. The menu will include dishes such as artisanal pizzas fired in a wood-burning stove, chicken parmesan, capellini, and gnocchi. Other menu New items include pork chops and seafood dishes. Terralina, which is operated by Levy Restaurants, will be open for lunch and dinner. It replaces Portobello Country Italian Trattoria.
And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Tuesday, partly sunny. A thunderstorm in some areas during the afternoon and evening hours. The high 90 to 94. Then later Tuesday night, partly cloudy, low 72 to 76. For Wednesday, intervals of clouds and sun with a thunderstorm in some areas. The high 89 to 93. Thursday, partly sunny with a chance of an afternoon thunderstorm high 89 to 93. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Howdy folks, R.L. here for Dairy Queen again to tell you about what's hot and what's not. Dairy Queen has some of the best char-grilled chicken breasts on earth, as well as their chicken breast salad. And the burgers are exceptional, cooked on a real grill for the best flavor and less fat. And for dessert, blizzards are unequal. So personally, banana split is my all-time favorite. Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. Some of the easiest foods to grow on a balcony. That's coming up on This Land of Ours. Attention farmers and ranchers. USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service needs your agriculture census returns now. Once every five years, the Ag Census provides critical data that represents agriculture and important decisions at local, state, and national levels. Southeast region farmers are widely diversified, so do your part and be counted. Respond to the Census of Agriculture online today. Visit agcensus.usda.gov or call toll-free 888 to eight. Get equipped for anything with a John Deere 3025E compact tractor from AgPro. It's equipped with a low price of $139 per month, and we have all the attachments you'll ever need. Request a quote at agprogo.com. Offer in 731.18. Subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. 20% down payment required. Taxes, rate setup, and delivery charges could increase monthly payment. See dealer for details. Growing food at home can happen even when you don't have a lot of outdoor space. A balcony, for example, can be the perfect setting with as little as 10 or 20 square feet. These plants will do best in such compact settings and provide healthy, organic food in return, such as blueberries and strawberries. They'll do great in small containers or hanging baskets. Try all sorts of lettuce varieties, which do not require a lot of space or soil. A grapevine just needs a little bit of space on the floor and then will happily grow upwards and produce fruit above everything else. Tomatoes and hot peppers also do well on the balcony. Tomato vines can be trained to grow on the railing. Add some fresh herbs for some great ingredients and also attracting pollinators. And consider nasturtium. 